So let's name this. If you want to, you can just tell me in words what it is. Two pentamen. Pent and um, right. The thing that people tend to forget is that you need to say the location of the carbonyl. Because it could be in the middle. It could have been on the number three. That's right. Um, so here we have to say two pentanones. So the suffix for ketones is O-N-E. Good. Uh, so let's name this. Acetone or two... I mean, um, two propone. Two propanone. Pro propanone. Yeah. That's right. And the other way it could be dimethyl ketone. Ah, uh, yeah. You could also, uh, another way of naming is a dimethyl ketone. I guess that's right. I don't usually use that system, but I suppose that would also be a, a, another common way of naming it. In real life, this is always called acetone. Yeah. And as we've talked about, acet always means two carbons, except for this one exception, where it means three carbons. Um, that's not hard to remember because there can't be a two-carbon ketone. That would be an aldehyde. It's impossible to have a two-carbon ketone. Okay, so IUPAC name is propanone. Everyone calls it acetone. Don't forget the AN here. That tells us that there's no double bonds because if there was double bonds, it would be propenone. Although, I, I guess this has too few carbons to have double bonds, so don't forget the AN anyway. You probably don't need the number two because there's no other place that the double bond could be and still be a ketone, although I don't think you would lose points for that. But people usually wouldn't put the two here because that's really the only place that the carbonyl could be in this case. All right, very good. Uh, let's name this. Cyclohexanone. Yeah, cyclohexanone. Here we don't need a number because by definition this is the number one carbon now. So this would be cyclohexanone, good. Um, so notice, that it, um, remember that for aldehydes we basically had a totally different way of naming straight chain and cyclic aldehydes. Straight chain aldehydes had the AL suffix, and cyclic aldehydes had the carbaldehyde suffix. But that's not the same as for ketones. For ketones, the straight chain and the cyclic is basically the same. It's still an O-N-E suffix. Because for, it's on the, the, yeah. the ring. That's exactly right. That's a good point. You can't actually put the aldehyde in the ring. So I guess that was the rationale for giving it a whole different type of suffix. Whereas you can really put the ketone carbon right in the ring. So it, you, they use the same suffix as they would for the straight chain. Good. Ah, that reminds me. What's this usually called? Benzaldehyde. Yeah. This is usually called benzaldehyde. I don't think that's the IEPAC name, but that's what everyone calls it. Benzaldehyde. It would like, one, three, five, tri, N, <laughs> no, tricyclohexane. The IUPAC name is benzene carbaldehyde, but I don't think you would be tested on that. Okay. Everyone calls this benzaldehyde. Right. Okay, let's name this compound. Yeah, good. It's good to notice that this would be a good source of Michael addition or any other conjugate addition. Notice we can't start the numbering from the left because we want to give the ketone the lowest possible number. So it's good that you started the numbering from, I'm sorry, you can't start the numbering from the right. It's good that you started the numbering from the left. However, um, again, we made a mistake that we talked about a couple minutes ago. 
Key. Yeah. Ah. It's, it's, so, it's so easy to miss Ooh. that. All right. So you're right. Again, it would be legal to use trans here, but to be on the safe side, we'll just call it E, because these two groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. Our two groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, so this is E or trans, three pentene, two ohm. It would have been a lot more obvious if I'd drawn it as cis, but that would be yeah. too easy. Um, okay. What if there was like a hexane ring with a ketone attached to it? Like this? Mm -hmm. All right, maybe I was kind of hoping you wouldn't ask that. All right, so uh, let's see. Wait, well, they told us the answer. Who told us? Mm -hmm. It was cyclohexane to uh, cyclohexane ethanol or something. Let's see what the book says about that. Is it a rapid nature? Um, it problem set. So here's the IUPAC name. And it's right there. It is a hexyl in the book, I don't think. No, these are oic acids. Yeah, we'll get to those in a few minutes. So far, we're still working on alkyls and ketones. Oh, it is hexyl? So we're naming this as a substituent. We're naming this as a substituent. If this was the main chain, it would be cyclohexane. But since it's, we're naming it as a substituent, it's cyclohexyl. Uh, here's the number one carbon. So this is the parent chain over here. It makes sense to treat this like the parent chain, I guess, because it's got the functional group. One cyclohexyl, because the cyclohexyl group is on the number one carbon. Um, and there's two carbons in this ketone over here. So it's one cyclohexyl, hex, cyclohexyl ethanone. Um, however, um, there is a common name for this that comes up a lot that I'm always forgetting. Yeah, although that wouldn't uh, apply here, actually. Um, what if that was a benzene? Yeah, that, that comes up more often, so let's do that. All right, so how would we call this? First of all, we can name it with an IUPAC name that's pretty similar to how we use the IUPAC name here. Um, Cyclohexene, Now we need, what is the name for benzene as a substituent? Phenyl. Phenyl, oh. that's right. We talked about how that doesn't seem very logical, um, but it's not called benzyl. Benzyl is something else. Benzene as a substituent is oh, called phenyl. benzyl is actually something else? Yeah. Yeah. I think we talked about that. We, we can review that. That'll, that'll probably be more important on the second midterm when you guys have actually studied benzene. But yeah. Okay, um, logically speaking, you would think that this would be benzyl, but it's not. A benzene substituent is called phenyl. So, so this would be phenyl one phenyl, ethanone. right, one phenyl ethanone. However, this has a very common common name that I'm always forgetting. Acetophenone. You got it. Why is this logical? Because it's two carbons. Acet means two carbon. And own on the number one carbon and phen. Yeah, so this is somewhat logical. Acet for these two carbons. We know acet usually means two carbons. Phen for the phenyl group and own for the ketone. This is used a lot more, co more common than the IUPAC name here. Okay, so yeah, those, uh, those could come up. All right, let's try naming this. Two, four. Okay, that's good. It's good that you started the numbering from the right and not from the left. 
Also notice, if there's a competition between a ketone and an aldehyde, who gets the suffix? Aldehyde. aldehyde. Usually, now we can't use my oxidation trick, because these have the same level of oxidation. However, the other tiebreaker is usually terminal functional groups are higher priority than internal functional groups. Well, aldehydes have to be terminal, so this gets the suffix. Um, so this would be, and so it looks like you guys have remembered that a ketone uh, prefix is oxo. We saw earlier that alcohol prefix is hydroxy. Well, ketone prefix is oxo, so this would be three oxo butanal. Okay.